What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we're back in Space Engineers, back on planet, oh yeah. And I figured the first thing that would be really good to cover would be some of the more simple ships, some of those things you're going to use right at the start of your survival career on planets. So we've got a few examples in front of me here, and we're actually going to focus on this one in particular, because this one's nice and simple, sort of the more, most simple of the designs, the one you probably get to first. And it's designed to be a little welding ship to work alongside that new cockpit building mode and it's going to carry all of your welding materials, everything you need and it's going to be light, super easy and more importantly it's going to be capable of floating in gravity. At the moment we're in creative mode and I'm obviously just hovering around in my jetpack. In survival that's not something you can do. It's nothing like so easy. You're constantly going to be being pulled down towards the ground and it's going to make things a lot more difficult for you to build. So that's the idea of this ship, something light, cheap, easy to put together, and something that can carry itself and its own weight even when fully loaded inside a gravity field. So if we just unlock this here, you can see handles all right. Uh, we've got an interesting setup with the engines where I've not gone too overboard. You've got to remember that this has got to be controllable at close range. It's designed to be something where you can actually weld around nice and easily. So you've got a good point of view, really easy to see where your welders are going, and at the same time, it's relatively easy to control. So let's drop this down to the ground, just land her here, and lock the landing gear in place. And I will pop over here, and we're actually going to build one of these live, because they're nice and simple, and it's the easiest way I can show you sort of what to go about doing with one of those. But before we start, there's a couple of things I want to point out that perhaps might confuse a few people when it comes to the first things you're building. So if we go in here, the first thing we want to do is build a new station, because if we build anything on the ground itself, it's probably going to fall over. The landing gear don't lock down very well on, on the earth. So we've got this block here and you can see it's not particularly well lined up with the ground. If we were to put this down we'd have a funny angle. So don't forget B turns on the station rotation mode and this is what it was all designed for. It was designed for planets and it's going to line itself up automatically. We don't need to move it around or anything. It's going to automatically go into a sensible sort of position to be putting this on the ground and then we can build ourselves a platform to build off of. So we build this out and as I said we want to build a platform so that we don't end up with our ship falling over. The landing gears don't, don't have much strength against the ground. But anyway, let's start building this thing, and let's get a new small ship firstly, make sure it's locked nicely to the floor, and from here we're going to build up a bit, because what this is going to do is give us something we can get underneath to build from. So we're just going to build a little sort of basic underframe like this, trying to keep it above the landing gear in the middle so that it doesn't fall over. And onto this we're going to start building the bits and bobs we need. So we're going to have a cockpit at the front, and behind the cockpit we're going to put the oxygen we need. So we're going to get one of these oxygen tanks and we're going to make sure the small doors are facing forwards and the big doors facing backwards just so it lines up nicely. And then behind this, because if you look over here we've got this kind of two wing design, we're going to need to split the card conveyor network out. So I've actually forgotten one of the blocks I need. We need one of the large conveyors like this and we're just going to have it so that the small doors are pointing upwards. And this is kind of important because on the back of here we want to have a connector and this is how we're going to unload everything when we get to the far end but we're also going to want to come out the sides. And this is where we're going to put our welder. So we have a couple of these conveyor corners just to move things around. And then our cargo. So our medium cargo containers go either side and these are obviously going to provide us with plenty of storage and also give us the big doors that we need, the big cargo doors we need to fit the welders on. So then we can drop a welder either side as well and you can start to see how the shape of the ship is coming together and also how it's kind of quite basic in its overall design. Now there's a couple of bits more missing. On planets it's going to be very hard to get uranium so we're going to need battery power for most of what we're doing and that's why we've got the connector as well as being able to load and unload. The connector enables us to recharge the ship as well if we need to. So we can just pop this on the back here and we've actually got a couple of designs up there where later down the line I added some more batteries onto the back. There's space to expand this design if you want more longevity out of it. So this battery will last probably about 15 minutes of building, but if you wanted to, you could expand it out and add more along the back there to try and increase the battery power. Now the next thing we need to worry about, and this is the most important thing on these, is the thrusters. And the thing that you want to do a little bit differently because this is a welding ship, is to do with the forward thrusters. So normally you would think, eh, forward thrusters don't need too many of those. But with the inertial dampers change and how everything else is working, it's actually a good idea to have more forward thrust than it is to have backwards. It means that you've got a very controllable ship that stops quite quickly and in this case where you're welding and getting right up close to ships you're working with, that's a pretty good idea. The other thing that's pretty important obviously is this ship needs to be able to keep itself in the air and that's you know, 
probably the most difficult part when you're carrying that much cargo. So we're just going to slap a couple of these atmospheric engines pointing upwards and we're using the small ones to try and keep the costs down and then up the front here we're going to add a couple more just to balance things out. So we have a couple on the edge of the welders there, do the same on the other side. And now we've got our forward and our downward thrusters pretty much sorted so we need a few for the back. Now these, it's up to you how many you use. I would probably only use one. The idea being, again, that you have more, more braking power than you have accelerating power because, in reality, that's the way that feels natural. It would be pretty unusual for a car, for example, to accelerate faster than it could brake. And with the dampers changed, that's very much what we're starting to see in Space Engineers. So we're going to whack a couple of these horizontal ones on and now as well, and everything is looking pretty good. We've got everything but the downward thrusters. Now, it would seem a bit weird to need downward thrusters in gravity, but believe it or not... <coughs> Excuse me, but believe it or not, you need these just because when your ship is capable of hovering properly, obviously there's nothing to force you down into the ground. So you want a couple of things, and these are just going to be there to help you land, basically. So we can pop those on. Now we've got all the directions covered. There are only a couple of bits missing to make this a fully working ship. So first up, we kind of want some extra abilities for it that might as well be on there while we do so. So an antenna is always a really good idea. It helps you find the ship if it gets lost. And it's also a way of communicating and operating bits on it without needing to be in the pilot seat. Another thing that we're obviously missing is the gyroscopes. And again, because you want this to be kind of maneuverable, I would use a pair. They're quite heavy, so you want to keep gyroscope usage to a minimum. But a pair of them is a pretty good thing for something that's going to be trying to work in amongst other ships and other parts. And then finally, because if you've started to experience planets now, you'll know it gets pretty dark at night. We're going to whack a couple of lights on here just to illuminate whatever it is we're welding. Now, the other thing that seems a bit un unintuitive, but I'm going to do on this design, is actually put a couple of lights pointing down. If I can find a good place for them. So maybe one there and one there. And the idea is with these is sometimes you need to see where you're landing. It really does get dark at night, and this is going to give you the ability to actually look where you're coming down. Then the final thing we're missing is, of course, our landing gear so that when we land, the thing is not going to suddenly wander away and we can turn our thrusters off and everything's going to be sort of fine and dandy and in position. So let's just grab those landing gear out, pop those on the sides, and we are pretty much done with the ship. The only thing we might need to do, because I need to check quite how the downwards performance handles, but it's the downwards performance you need to worry about. So at the moment, we've got six of these atmospheric thrusters pointing down. You'll notice as well that I haven't included any armor blocks or anything unnecessary in this. The idea is to keep it as light as possible. So last thing we need to do, let's separate it here from, whoop, separate it on the right line here, away from the frame we've been building it on. And as you can see, it just hovers quite nicely there, ready to go. And we have ourselves a really simple, really basic little mining ship, but that it, mining ship, little welding ship, that is nice and effective. You can really get in there, have a look at what you're doing. You can see it's handling pretty well. You've got a good range of motion and it stops nice and quickly, which as I said, is really important for this sort of thing. You can imagine if I was coming up here and actually trying to weld one of these ships, it would be very easy to be going too quickly and end up colliding with it rather than coming in and doing the welding. So there you go guys, a little bit different for me. I don't normally do a tutorial sort of thing, but I figured as everything was brand new here, this might be a really good place to start, just give you guys that are fresh to planets an idea of what are the first things that are going to be useful. And trust me, these welding ships in survival are very, very handy to have. So I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did find it helpful, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It does really help me and the channel out. If you didn't like it, hit me up down in the comments below. Let me know what I can do to improve or how I can change to make this better for you. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.